This episode of Sports Addict Live brought to you by none other than First Round Collectibles. With over 40 years experience, First Round Collectibles offers the widest variety of quality Beckett graded sports cards anywhere. Representing 10 major sports, First Round has all your favorite players from all your favorite teams at great prices. We are proud of our knowledgeable staff and top-rated customer service, and our reviews vouch for our integrity. Visit us today at firstroundcollectibles.com and find your heroes. That's the number one, st.com. First Round Collectibles, sports cards for sports fans. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh, I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah, I just gotta go hard. Uh, I just gotta go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Yeah. Hey. Welcome, weekend, it's the weekend, weekend version of Sports Addict Live, I'm your host Mark Sauter, thank you so much for joining me. For my Canadian listeners out there, epic, epic finish to this Toronto-Montreal game, absolutely unreal. Like I've said before, I'm not the biggest CFL guy, um... But this is just unbelievable. Montreal about to kick a game time field goal. Clock at zeros. The rule deficiencies. Wow. Blocked punt or blocked field goal. Amazing. Yeah, the rule differences in the CFL are unbelievable. Like the clocks are at zeros, but because they're set up for the play, they can finish the play. And. Yeah, all the different things. You kick the 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 ball in the end zone, you get one point. I'm watching the game. They catch a they uh, the Argos catch a touchdown pass, and there's like corner edges, like a trapezoid <laughs> type shape. In the it's it's wild. It's wild. But anyway, it's the weekend. Friday night, Saturday, more than likely is when you're listening to this. Uh, football week two, NFL week two kicked off on Thursday, and we got a massive slate of games this weekend. Two Monday nighters, which I'm curious what you guys think. Get at me at Sport Addict Mark M A R C. Uh, that's Sport Addict Mark M A R C. Uh, be curious to know what you guys think about the um. Two Monday nighters. I guess if they were stacked, like I'd be down like a seven thirty and a ten thirty or seven fifteen, like nine thirty or or something like that. But the fact that they're only one hour apart, I don't know exactly. Like it's fine, I guess. But and I mean, I'm a nerd. I'm watching every game at the same time, like regardless. But you know, I don't know. It's a little bit strange to me. But either way. Last night, or Thursday night, week two kicked off with the Eagles and the Vikings. And I promise you, since I've already told you, it's out there now. I'm a massive Eagles fan. And I promise you this. This is my oath, my sports addict oath to you, the listener or the watcher or whatever. I will only talk about the Eagles first in three different scenarios. Number one is the only game on, which it was on Thursday. Or if they win the conference championship game. And it, maybe I'll go AFC. Not just to seem like too much of a um, homer. Or if Jalen Hurts goes for like 500 yards or something like that. Um, then then I'll talk about the Eagles first. But most Sundays I try not to. Um, and Hurts throwing for 500 yards doesn't seem likely right now, does it? Really, really, really fascinating watching this game. They tried to establish the pass early. 
Um, and it just didn't work. It's just not clicking. The pass game right now is just not clicking. And then they realized, oh, yeah, we have the best offensive line in football. Let's just run. Might as well. DeAndre Swift comes out 175 yards around there. Um, gets his touchdown at the end. Super happy for him to get the touchdown. If you get 170 yards and no touchdown, like JJ has two weeks in a row, Justin Jefferson. Wow. Justin Jefferson gets 150 yards or more two weeks in a row and doesn't get a touchdown. Um, tough. T I don't think he got one in week one. Uh, but regardless, it was really interesting to like, uh, Eagles Twitter was on fire. Like, and I'm not talking fans. Like I'm talking beat reporters, radio people, like professionals. Are we worried about Jalen Hurts? Worst drive I've ever seen from Jalen Hurts. Just lots of scared people out there. And like, here's my take. So first of all, Eagles win 34-28. Sneaky backdoor cover by the Vikings. I'm still not totally um, calmed down from that. Not great if you're a gambling man and pick the Eagles. Uh, kind of predictable, though. Like, Kirk Cousins doesn't win in prime time, but he does cover. And this isn't the first time that he's burned us. I'll tell you that for sure. Um... But they begin throwing the ball. It doesn't work. They eventually figure it out. And they just start running it down their throats. And, you know, a lot of people today are super concerned about Jalen Hurts. And here's my take. Number one, they're 2-0. and They're 2-0. and Right? They won the game. Right? Step one. You got to win the game. The other thing is, this new offensive coordinator some people were making it a big deal some people weren't clearly it's going to take some time it's going to take some time uh to adjust to this new coordinator and just to figure things out and i thought that the in-game adjustment just to realize like oh hey this passing thing isn't working just like doesn't matter whose fault it is at that point Right, just figure it out. We gotta run the ball, and they ran the ball extremely well. Um, and as far as Jalen Hurts goes, there's two things that concern me. It it's not it's not the rhythm. It's not the lack of success. He had 193 yards, but 120 plus of that was two throws uh, to Devonte Smith. Right, you got one touchdown, one interception. The two things that have really caught my eye, I'm not really worried about the flow, the rhythm, because like that'll come. You know, Nick Sirianni owned it uh, at the end of last week's game, just saying that you know I regret not playing uh, my starters during preseason. That I need to do that more. You know, next year, I'm never going to do that again. You know, kind of own that uh, mistake, which has been a super, like, relevant conversation this year. More than I remember in the last couple of years, you know, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, you know, just not having good first games. But all that will come. And the new coordinator, like, I'm not concerned about it. The offensive line in the first game didn't play very well. I thought last night they played much better. It's more to me, I just feel like something's off with his demeanor. Like, he's a very calm, cool, collected, very centered, just panned face all the time. No emo, but... It, it almost seems like he's just not, I don't want to say totally present because that's not the type of competitor Jalen Hurts is. We know that now. But I don't know. Just something's off with with just the way that he's carrying himself. And he just doesn't seem 100% 
comfortable running the football. That's the second thing. Is it just seems like that natural instinct of I'm taking off and I'm going for it. There was a couple situations last night where I thought for sure he could go for 10, 15, 20 yards even. And it just seems he's just super hesitant to just take the ball and run. And then the other thing too is we're seeing him just fall down, you know, more than before where he would just go for it. And maybe that's preserving his body. He got this massive payday this summer. Maybe they're just like, hey man, listen, just take it easy. It's week two, you know, Super Bowl on the line, you know, playoffs on the line, then get after it. But don't do anything crazy like our man Josh Allen did on Monday night. Like, just take it easy. Um, I'm overly not concerned, personally. Um, and, like, objectively speaking, not just as a fan, but objectively speaking, I I just don't. I just think, like, new coordinator, no preseason reps for the starters. You're up 2-0. The defense has looked very good. The turnovers is just incredible to see how many turnovers. Seven or eight in the first uh, two games. There are things that are concerning. Most of them are due to injuries, though. or And, like, the middle is weak regardless. Um, but the defense has looked very good. I'm not super concerned by that. I just think, and especially, like, here's the schedule. Just pull it up here. So, at New England last week, home against Minnesota, obviously, on Thursday night. They're in Tampa Bay next week, then home to Washington, then in Los Angeles to play the Rams, and then they play, they're in New York to play the Jets. Uh, and then Miami, home, Sunday night football. That would be a great game. And then uh, in Washington. So there's only one real opponent that really raises your uh, eyebrows there. The Jets defense is always going to make you second guess for sure. Um, but this is the perfect start for you know two new coordinators Obviously, the offense looks rusty, especially Jalen Hurts. Specifically, Jalen Hurts, really. This is the perfect, perfect schedule to get warmed up, right? Tampa Bay's next. Washington, Rams, Jets, Dolphins, uh, Commanders. Because by November, it's time to buckle down, right? You're home to Dallas. You're in Kansas City home to Buffalo, home to the 49ers, and then in Dallas. Uh, so now this is the perfect schedule to get warmed up. Perfect schedule to get comfortable. If we keep seeing this in two, three weeks, I'll be a lot more concerned. For now, I'm okay with it. On the Viking side, listen, we talked about this last time. That defense is super concerning. Uh, we saw that last week. They played okay against Tampa Bay, um, but not the strongest. Like, I thought that the Eagles last night were going to get way more one-on-one -on -one, uh, options, especially as the game went on. But that Vikings defense is nothing to write home about. And the offense is the offense. I mean... Not only we've talked about it in the last couple weeks, but all summer we're hearing they went 11-0 in one-score games, and they're already 0-2. We knew that wasn't going to last. We knew that wasn't going to come back. I still picked them over 8.5 wins. That's not looking wonderful right now. But the offense, they put up stats, they put up numbers, and they don't win. And this is Kirk Cousins. Right? I mean, the quarterback special, phenomenal. He's adorable in that with his family. But, I mean, this just kind of is what it is. Um, it'll be interesting to see as the season goes on it, if they can figure that out. So, looking ahead into the weekend, a couple things that I have my eyes on. And I'm going to jump all the way to Sunday night. Skip past the 1 o'clock games, past the 4 o'clock games. Sunday night, Patriots home to the Dolphins. 
uh, and I'm really excited for this game on a couple fronts. Number one, the Dolphins offense, it's been talked about all week. They were unstoppable last week. You know, Tua, 466 yards. Obviously, Tyreek Hill went off. You know, Waddle had 78 yards. I think that he threw to seven different receivers, I want to say, in that game. Just unbelievable. Um, but the Chargers ran their faces off against that Dolphins defense. The defense was very concerning. I know it's the Chargers. I know it's Herbert. I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that defense did not look great. And I believe the Patriots are going to make a point like we're going to run the ball down your throats. And, you know, Mac Jones last week with the Eagles looked fantastic. I mean, fantastic is probably strong, but he looked good. And we've talked about this many times. They have an actual offensive coordinator now. And I just think that this Patriots, it's a really good matchup for them. I think their defense is way better than the Chargers defense by a country mile. And I think they're going to give the Dolphins trouble. I'm really interested to see. We've seen this from Tua in the past where you have an incredible game like that and then fall flat on your face. Not just from Tua. It's a very common trend, right? You have this crazy game and then you just fall flat um it, it's not strange and i i don't expect it to happen but i can see it 100 percent. i can see it on the other side of that two was undefeated against uh the patriots right he's had their number the games always haven't been pretty but he's found a way i i am really looking forward to see okay Mac Jones, what do you got? Right, the Eagles have their weaknesses. Right, you did your thing. You got some rust out of the way in the first half of that game, specifically the first quarter. What do we got now? You know, I'm really looking forward to see it with that Pats defense. I think the Dolphins are in trouble. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. I can also see a world where it's like 27 to three and or 27 to 10 uh, and the Dolphins just blow them out I, I don't see the Dolphins getting blown out but I can see a world where the Dolphins do the blowing out for sure um the next game is Jets Cowboys I believe that's a 430 game and I mean listen you've heard it from me You've heard it all over sports radio, sports, you know, television, the talk shows. Aaron Rodgers and the Jets and the dream is dead and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Zach Wilson, what do we got, bro? <laughs> what do we got? Right? The, the, the uh, rhetoric that's being fed to us is that he's matured. With the six weeks of Rodgers, he's grown up. He sees the field better. He knows the playbook better. He's not texting my mom anymore. He's, he's you know, he's this changed man. And we'll see. Because as, you know, that Bill's defense is okay. I don't love them. They're fine. This Cowboys defense is, my opinion, the best in the league. Most people's uh, opinions, top three in the league. Michael Parsons is going to have a heyday. And the Jets' the offensive line, we've heard it the whole summer. If there's one weakness on this team, it's that O-line, right? So, with the Cowboys, I mean, I just think this defense is going to cause havoc. Can they establish the run game? Don't make mistakes. I, I know we're going to see Zach Wilson do this thing where he runs out to the right and then goes as far to the sidelines as he can and then throws the ball away. We're going to see that a ton. I wish there was a over-under on how many times we see that stupid play. But I expect Bryce Hall or Brees Hall to get a ton of carries, establish this run, get the running game going. If they can't get the running game going, it's it's over. 100%. Uh, 
Um, and then I'd be interested to see with the Cowboys. Like, that game against the Giants, like, make no mistake, and I said this last week, or the last uh, episode, I, I didn't learn anything new about either team during that blowout. The Giants had an awful game. Their defense, uh, their uh, Cowboys defense, just owned the game from the jump. That tape means nothing. Throw it out. It's done. We know the Cowboys defense is phenomenal. We know the Giants offense has to be better than that. They're playing the Cardinals this week. That's an absolute redemption game. Have to, have to get that game. But the Cowboys offense looked okay. But that's all they needed to was to look okay. Like the Cowboys offense didn't even need to really be there. That game was won before they even got the ball. So I just think that we haven't really seen the Cowboys offense through one week have to be good. And now you're facing a Jets defense that looked incredible Monday night. And I think from a defensive side of this game, this is a really fun game. Like def if if you like those really filthy like defensive mashups that this could be like a 17 to 9 game or like less than that even. Like this could be a really hard-nosed blue-collar game and I'm looking forward to see those defenses. The other point that I have here, uh Kansas City against the Jags I believe they are on the road. I'll just double check that here. We want 100% facts on Sports Attic Live. Yes, they're on the road against the Jags. Um, and I, I don't know. Oh, no. Yeah, they're on the road against the Jags. Yep. And I don't know. Like, I think they're favored by four and a half. Or maybe three and a half now. I'm not going to bet this game. And the Bengals are home to the Ravens. This is my other side to this point. Is I, I'm not worried about either of these teams. I'm I'm really not. Like if the Chiefs go down 0-2. Yeah, it's a hole. Yeah, not ideal. Clearly. Same with the Bengals. Um, but I'm not worried about this team. The only thing with the Bengals is... If the Ravens win this game, the Bengals are down 0-2, and you're losing to a divisional opponent who now goes up 2-0. And, and that's a bigger hole to climb um, because it's a divisional, right? Even still, I picked this team to make a wild card spot. I picked the Ravens to win the division. And I just I I'm not worried about these teams. I'm I'm really not as disappointing as last week was for both teams. Clearly, the Bengals more than the Chiefs. Either way, I'm not I'm not worried about these teams. Bengals are favored by three. I do think with with the injuries on defense, uh, the Ravens are susceptible to that Bengals offense. Uh, but I also think, and the same with you know Jalen Hurts with the Eagles. Like I don't think that this rust gets knocked off just after one week. I don't. I think the Bengals is going to take some time. You could see another two and three start or three and two. You know, two and two. So I'm not concerned. But that'll definitely be uh, something to be on the lookout for. And to that point, the Ravens need this game more than the Bengals do, I think. I think the margin for error is way thinner with the Ravens. The Bengals have been there before. They've done this before. Two straight championship games. One of those games they won. They, they're, they always get hot late. Always. The last two years. So, to me, the Ravens with this... You know, more weapons than Lamar has ever had. Get it, Andrews, not healthy. But to me, the Ravens need this game way more. I, I would way rather, like, I would be more concerned 
losing this game with the Ravens than I would be with the Bengals. Because the Ravens are still trying to figure out exactly what they are, exactly what that offense looks like with those new pieces. So I'm really interested to see how that one goes. The next for me is Detroit and Seattle. Seattle got a lot of love this summer. A lot. A lot of people picking them to win the division, as did I. I I thought they would win this division. I think I picked them to go 12 and 5, I believe, with the Niners going 11 and 6. And so I'm I'm I mean, they have two tackles hurt. I believe they have two tackles. Those two tackles aren't starting. The names are fleeing from my mind as we speak, but I believe they have two tackles not playing. Uh, their defense looks soft against that Rams team. And that Lions defense, like, they won that game. I mean, Tony won that game for the Lions, but you know what I mean. That Lions defense played very well. And so, for me... I just think that, number one, the Lions offense didn't look great with the Chiefs last Thursday night. They they did what they got to do. They had flashes, but they didn't look polished by any means. And so for me, this defense for the Seahawks looks soft. And so I think this is a spot for the Lions to ball out. And with those two tackles hurt for the Seahawks, I think the Lions can just roll over them with that defense. I believe they're minus four and a half. It opened at minus five and a half or six, and it went down to minus four and a half. So money coming in on Seattle. But I, I'm picking, uh, I, I think Detroit, this is a perfect spot. And for both teams, right? Because Detroit... They're at home, season opener at home, so the home opener. This team were favorites by a mile with the sports books uh, to win the division. This is their year, apparently. <laughs> it's it's the Lions, so we'll believe it when we see it. But that's what I mean, right? Like everybody's giving this team love. I picked the Packers to win the division. To me, the price with the Packers was just way more appealing than the price uh, with the Lions. But to me, you got to win this game. Not for your season's sake. Not if you you know lose this game, then, then the season's over. Clearly, that's not the case. But you beat the Super Bowl champions in their barn. That's a hockey term, I guess. On their home field. <laughs> um, and you you have to. Your opening game at home. This is the game. You need this game. Show your fans you're serious. Show your fans you're for real. Start 2-0. and And it would be the most Lions thing ever to start like 6-1 and and miss the playoffs. But I'm not going there. It's my grandfather's favorite team. He's 91 years old. He deserves this, Detroit. He deserves it. Go home. Show your fans what you got. Get the job done. All right. How about some picks? Some picks against the spread? How do we feel about that? All right. Nope. Hey. There we go. Hey. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Hate means I do something right. So I'm a letter. All right, let's make some picks. First game, and just to let you guys know, just to remind you, in case it's your first time listening, what I'm doing here, 
Picks against the spread. No prompts this week. Maybe I'll uh, tweet some out at Sport Addict Mark M-A-R-C on Twitter. Um, I don't mind props, but I just much prefer nice and simple against the spread. Nothing crazy. That's how I learned how to gamble um, as soon as I turned 18. Pro, uh, pro line tickets for you Canadian friends. My buddy's dad. As soon as I turned 18, he took me to the convenience store. We bought tickets. We sat down. He taught me what it was all about. And uh, that was the day that I started losing all my money. So here we go. Seattle at Detroit. Just talked about this game. Detroit minus four and a half. I'm doing a uh, one o'clock game, four o'clock game, Sunday nighter game, and Monday nighter game. And since there's two... Might as well just do them both. We're already here. We're already sprinkling change. We might as well do both of them. What fun would that be? We're not chickens. We're not soft. We're going all in. All right. Seattle at Detroit, minus four and a half. Like I said, I already said my thoughts. I just feel like the Seattle defense is uh, soft, and I feel like now's Detroit's time. They're home. They've been hyped up all season. They just beat the Super Bowl champs. Bring it home. Show us what you're all about. Prove it to us that you can not only beat this Seattle team, but just spank them. Spanking. Be their daddies, which is a uh, popular sports term nowadays somehow. Be their fathers. Go Go home. Show them what's up. Minus four and a half. That defense with those with those uh, Seattle offensive linemen out, like Detroit's defense should be all over this offense, um, and they should cover that pretty handily. Second pick. Now, this might be low hanging fruit. I get it. But Giants at Cardinals, four p.m. Giants are favored minus four and a half. Listen, we all know what happened on Sunday night. The Cowboys, they won that game before the game even started. It's done. It's over. Set the tape on fire. Move on. That doesn't have to define your team. Doesn't have to define your season. Such a popular debate too, right? All offseason. And for me... For the uh, podcast that I listen to and the radio shows I listen to, it was split like 50-50. You know, people saying, take the under, they're missing the playoffs, don't believe in this team, they're one and done, blah, blah, blah. Then the other half, you know, saying, in Brian Dayball, we trust, we would give our lives for this man. This team's going back. Danny Dimes is for real, blah, blah, blah. So now you're on the road. You're away from your fans. It's just you, the desert, and this awful Cardinals team. Four and a half is not a big number. It's absolutely doable. Go in there. Take your season back. Calm the narrative. Let's win this game. I'm picking the Giants. Minus four and a half. Sunday nighter. Dolphins at Patriots. We spoke about this game as well. I'm picking the Patriots. They were plus three and a half when I made my pick. They're now plus three. I'll still take the Patriots. I think, yeah, Tua had an incredible game last week. That that Chargers defense is a joke. But, you know, Brandon Staley is supposed to be some defensive genius. He's a joke. I, I don't trust the Chargers defense. So anything that anybody does, it's not irrelevant against the Chargers, but I take it, ah, I, I, it's not the be all end all for me. I like Tua. He played phenomenal. That's listen. You throw 466 against anybody in this league. That's incredible. Tyreek Hill had a game. Waddle had a game, but that run defense for the Dolphins causes some major concern for me and this is what this Patriots offense is all about the only way that Mac Jones just goes nuts is if that run game can get going 
I know that he threw for 300 plus yards last week, but they were behind that whole game. They were chasing it that whole game. He had no choice. And I, I just think this Patriots defense is a whole nother level than that Chargers defense. And I think they're going to give Dolphins fits. The one thing that I am concerned about, like we spoke about earlier, is two was never lost to the Pats. It's concerning, but you're giving me three points. Close divisional game. I think it'll be close, and I'm taking the Pats. And you can also convince me to take the Pats on the money line, um, and I just might do that. All right, Monday night, we got two. First one, Saints at Panthers. Not much to say about this game. Saints have a good defense. Panthers, young rookie quarterback. Saints minus three. I think this is absolutely doable. They only won 16 to 15 last game, but I I just don't see the Panthers scoring too many points here. I think it's going to be a probably pretty boring game, to be honest with you. The uh, Steelers game will be on my main TV, and I'll have the Panthers game kind of off to the side. Uh, but I'm picking Saints minus three. One hour later, the 8 o'clock game, Browns at Steelers. This is probably my least confident pick of the week, including the teasers that I'm going to give out here in a minute. But I'm picking Steelers plus two and a half. I, I just think they were embarrassed last week. And I think Mike Tomlin is going to whip these dudes up. I think, yes, Cam Hayward being injured, not ideal. Looks like he's going to be out probably two months. Not great. But I just think this offense is going to look much better. Browns, very good defense, not the Niners defense. They're very good. They're very talented. Jim Schwartz runs a tight ship. They're good. They're not the Niners. And I think that uh, the uh, Steelers have redemption. Because, listen, that game last week was embarrassing on a thousand different levels. And I just think this week is redemption. They got to get this one. They're at home. Plus two and a half. Take it. All right. If you were with me last week, you have learned very quickly, very early, that I love a good tease. Love it. So we got three teases, a 1 o'clock tease, a 4 o'clock tease, and an all-day tease. 1 o'clock tease, Lions. I got a lot tied up in the Lions this week. It <laughs> might not be a good sign. But Lions minus 4.5. We're going to tease that 6 points to plus 1.5. Ravens plus 3.5. We're going to tease that to plus, sorry, uh, Ravens plus three. We're going to tease that to plus nine. If the Ravens lose this game, I don't see it being by more than a touchdown. I just think divisional matchup, even if the Bengals have, you know, regained their form, I, I, I don't see this game being decided by more than a touchdown. Either way, like regardless of who wins, Ravens plus nine and the Packers they are plus one and a half dogs in Atlanta um it's another one like I know it's in Falcon territory but I, I don't fully understand why they're favored here the defense for the Packers is much better than the Falcons defense the offense looked much better than the Falcons offense did I don't trust Ritter I don't think I don't know who he is. A lot of people do. Like a lot of people seem to think this guy is no good. Like like no good. I don't know. I haven't watched him enough. I just I like what I see from Jordan Love. Now, um, wow, name escaping me. Aaron Jones. Him being banged up, not playing, but probably not playing. That is a little terrifying to me. Uh, but I like what I saw from this Packers team and that Packers defense already. I know it's just one game, but already they looked much better than they did last year, albeit against the Bears. Uh, but I like the Packers teasing them to plus seven and a half. Lions plus one and a half. Raisin, Ravens plus nine. Packers plus seven and a half. You get that at plus 140. 4 p.m. teams. 4 p.m. tees. 
two team tees, keeping it nice and simple. And to me, this one's almost too obvious, which we saw with uh, the Commanders Viking tees last week. Too obvious can be a little scary sometimes, um, but I love this uh, this one. 49ers against the Rams. 49ers are minus seven against the Rams, teasing that down to minus one. Cowboys at home against the Jets. They're minus eight and a half favorites, teasing that down to minus two and a half. You're getting that at minus 133. I, I do see a world where this Jets defense gives the Cowboys a ton of trouble. I do. If you can minimize the defensive touchdowns, I still don't think the Jets can keep up offensively. No matter how good their defense does, I don't see the Jets being able to score a ton of points against this defense. I feel like Michael Parsons is going to have a field day. And lucky for me, he's on my fantasy team. I hate the Cowboys with every fiber of my being, um, but I'm rooting for him on this day. So uh, Niners minus one, Cowboys minus two and a half. You're getting that at minus 133. My all-day tease. Now, I don't do this very often. Now, we just met. We're just getting to know each other. It's a fresh relationship, but you'll learn. I don't like doing seven-point teases. I feel like it's a bit unnecessary a lot of the time, and you're taking away the value of the bet. However, for this one, I, um, I changed my mind. I changed my ways. I don't see it happening more than once. Maybe it will. We'll see. We'll keep count. Uh, But the 49ers, again, just taking that right down to zero. Right down to zero. Cowboys, um, as I said, minus eight and a half favorites. Take it right down to minus one and a half. I like that. Uh, Patriots, teasing them from plus three up. To plus 10. If the Dolphins win, I don't see it being double digits. And you're getting that really comfortable space there of that touchdown. Um, I I really like the uh, Patriots plus double digits. You're getting that at plus 120. Niners right at zero. Cowboys minus one and a half. And Patriots plus 110. All right. One last thing before I go. Now, this is, who knows, maybe this will be a uh, new segment. Toronto Corner for my Toronto sports fans. I'm based here in Toronto. I love my Toronto sports teams. And we have a little superiority complex like nobody cares about us. So, Toronto fans, I see you. I hear you. You are seen and loved. I'm here for you. I'm here to voice What I feel like we all feel, and I'm going to tell the world, I know the Blue Jays won tonight. We're switching over to baseball just for a hot minute. I know the Blue Jays won tonight, 3-0. It's a big win. What we saw against the Rangers the last four games was absolutely embarrassing. Now, the Rangers lost tonight. Massive, by the way. Like, the Rangers, I believe they lost 14 out of 20 games. I believe. Then they come to the Rogers Center, and they outscore us 35 to 9. 35 to 9. They kick our heads in. It was awful. And then they lose tonight 12 to 3. And I believe the opponent they played was awful. Let me just double check this real quick. The Guardians. They lose to the Guardians 12-3 to tonight. They're 14 out of 20 losing. So, what's that? 6 for 20 in the last 20 games. They come to Toronto. They beat you 35-9, to win four straight, and then get their butts kicked in Cleveland. And I'm, I'm sick and tired. Listen, The pitching staff has been phenomenal this year. The starters, like every night, the starters typically are going five, six, sometimes more. Every night. They've stayed pretty healthy for the most part. Ryu has come back and has looked fine. 
The whole Manoa debacle understood, heard, and understood. Not great. But for the most part, like your starters have done their job. The bullpen as well. Like the bullpen has had its ups and downs. Richards got lit up last night. Absolute gas can out there. However, generally speaking, the bullpen's done their job. Runners in scoring position have been the death of this Blue Jays season. And I understand now we're half a game out because the Rangers lost tonight. We're half a game out. It's not over. You got 14 games left. It's not done. This team were one of the top World Series favorites going into this season. And not by me, not my Blue Jays fans. By, like, baseball people. (laughs) Like, people who know baseball. Like, people from ESPN. MLB.com. From Fox Sports. From, like, you gotta understand, if you're not from Toronto, we have this, like I said, this, like, superiority complex where nobody wants to play here. Nobody wants to stay here. Nobody outside of Canada believes in our teams, talks about our teams, specifically basketball and baseball. Nobody, you know, believes in Toronto, cares about Toronto, blah, blah, blah. There were baseball writers across the continent that picked the Blue Jays to win the World Series this year. And they have a like phenomenal roster. If you're just looking at the paper, you go Springer to Bichette to Guerrero. Right, you got Bell and Kiermaier in here to kind of, you know, um, age this group a little bit. Some veteran leadership, Chapman, right? Like, there are guys that are destroying the baseball. Not named Bichette. I know he's been hurt, understood. Not named Guerrero, who by his standards has had a very, very luck- lackluster, is that the term? Lackluster year. There are guys ripping the whatever off the baseball. Davis Schneider, who's been incredible to watch, incredible story. If you like baseball, you don't know the story, check it out. It's been a lot of fun to watch this guy. But like Spencer Horowitz, I think his first name is Spencer Horowitz. Has any Blue Jay fan heard of this guy? Sounds like some Jewish lawyer. Like Horowitz, who is this guy? Clement or Clement. Guys that are coming in in the clutch who aren't our all-stars, superstars. And the other thing, too, about this team that's driving me insane is, and it seems to be a theme here, especially with hockey and baseball, this passive, aggressive, like, your team is clearly playing awful, and instead of just owning it and saying it and, you know, calling your players out, it's like, ah, tomorrow's a new day. All we can do is tomorrow. It's a long season. It's a long season. This is just baseball. You got 15 games left. What do you mean it's a long season? It's September. It's it's halfway through September. The season's over. And it's just not a lot of passion coming out. Not a lot of like being pissed off. And it's just... It's just driving me insane. If this team makes it to the playoffs the way they're playing, and I know how baseball works. One week, you're awful. Next week, boom, you light it up. I get it. This team on paper should be a World Series contender. How this team has played all year, we've been waiting for Vladi to get cooking. We've been waiting for this team to turn it around. You go four, you go six, what was it? Four out of six against Oakland and Colorado, good for you. They're two of the worst teams in the league. Congratulations. You sweep, you know, Kansas City. Okay. Yeah, you should. Right? World Series favorites should be sweeping Kansas City. Then the biggest, biggest series of the year, you get your faces kicked in 
35 to 9, and then the team that keeps their faces in go out and lose 12 to 3 to the Guardians. It's just so frustrating. And if this team makes it to the playoffs, obviously I'll be rooting for them, and you'll hear me in four weeks singing their praises. But it's been a it's been a tough, tough year. It's been the toughest year I can remember for a team that's well above 500 with like l- legitimate chances to make the playoffs. It's been a weird season. But I'll get off my soapbox now. Enjoy your weekends. Enjoy the fo- the uh, football, college football, if that's your thing. Um, I'll be watching. I'll be placing some bets. Enjoy your NFL Sundays. Cast those bets. Hit me up at Sport Addict Mark M A R C on Twitter. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, leave a comment, all that stuff. I'm Mark Sauter. You've been watching Sports Addict Live. Get hooked.